Okay, this is the slab saw. This is oil cooled. Keep things from getting too hot when we cut big rocks. I've got a few here to show you. These are thunder eggs that were collected here in Oregon. And this is what they look like on the outside. And then this is what they look like when you cut them open. All kinds of cool banding and colors and lots of variability. So these were found in two different locations, both in Oregon, but very different. So basically, you load this in here in a vise, and it's just gonna take slices off like a loaf of bread. This is a big piece that was cut but as you can see, it was very fractured, so it didn't result in a lot of usable material for lapidary or jewelry work. Here's a few slices of thunder eggs. So you can see you can cut thin or thick pieces, like I said, just like a loaf of bread. This is a piece of Pride A polka dot agate from the Pride A mine. So what I would do is I would actually draw a shape on here. I would find the feature on the rock that I like the most, and I would try to avoid getting these little cracks in there. And I would just draw the shape that I want to get. Here's some that I have that are in process. These are obsidian from Glass Buttes, Oregon. You can see that really cool ribbon. So I'm making cabochons out of these. All I've done so far is shape them. They've got a really rough shape, but they have not been polished completely yet. These are just some cool agates. These are cabochons that my partner made that are done. This is little cutie's got some little jersey in there. These are cabochons that I purchased on Etsy. These are Labradorite from Madagascar. Got that really cool Labradorescence flash in them. And then I brought these out just to show you kind of how tiny it can get. So this is an opal from Ethiopia that's been cut and shaped into this little teeny tiny cab. And then here, even tinier, little teeny tiny moonstones. So I would use those like as an accent next to, next to a larger stone. These are pieces that we have stabilized. So these have been cut, but the material was very, very porous. So we um, put them through a process called stabilizing that involves basically impregnating the rock with resin. Try not to do that whenever possible. We just kind of wanted to experiment with it. Um, And then here's one that is being set into silver. It's really ugly right now. It'll get cleaned up and polished up real nice. I just kind of wanted to show you that process right there. Over here, this is the polisher. It's not set up. There's usually another wheel right here. I'll set that up for a demonstration later. And then here is a smaller saw for actually cutting the shapes after you get your slab. Try to save as much usable material as possible. So I'm going to try to make a 
straight cut down here, and then we'll start working on this one. Okay, I moved the camera so you can see a little bit better. Here's the progress that I made on the first one. As you can see, I've gotten pretty close to that original outline just by making the straight cuts all the way around. I'm gonna go back now and do the other one. I've marked off a very small, like earring sized cabochon around this little druzy inclusion in this Pride A polka dot agate. Um, I tried to get it really strategically so that the pattern on the rock and that little druzy element will both come through in the final piece. And then I found another spot on the other piece that has this really cool, interesting polka dot pattern. I'm going to cut that out as well. Okay, I cut it a little close on that one. I'm just gonna go ahead and stop now and finish the rest with the grinding wheel, which will attach. 